Um, now, COVID has caused huge disruption to our children's learning, and it's no surprise that's going to have an impact. But have lessons been learned overseas on better ways to teach in times like these? We're joined now from uh, by international education expert Conrad Hughes, who joins us from the International School of Geneva. Good morning, Conrad, and thanks for joining us. The... Um, a situation here, as I'm sure you're aware, is we have a revolving door where uh, students and teachers are off at any one time because we're in the middle of this uh, Omicron peak, really. Tell us how you're doing it to better effect with less disruption on kids. Well, I mean, you've got different models. You've got blended learning, you've got hybrid learning, you've got full-blown online learning. And then you've got this very difficult situation where there are many absences. And as you said, uh, instructors and students in and out of, out of lessons, this is a major organizational challenge. And I think the, the most important thing to realize is that when you try to wholesale shift what you do in a normal classroom online or into some sort of hybrid uh, environment, it doesn't work. You've got to modify what you're doing. So what, what we've done in the International School of Geneva is it's really three steps. I mean, the first one is to reduce. You've got to reduce the amount of time that you are interfacing with students. People get exhausted staring at a screen all day. Um, and it's, it's not right to put students through the exact same timetable online. So what we did is we took 45-minute lessons and we chopped them down to 30 minutes. We took... Uh, uh, less than it would be an hour and a half, and, and we chopped it down to an hour. Mm. That's the first thing. Um, the second thing is because of that, obviously, and this is where it gets really interesting, you've got to modify uh, what you're teaching and how you're teaching. And actually, I think it makes you a better teacher because you distill, you synthesize, you cut to the quick. You realize that a lot of teaching and learning in a classroom, uh, if it's not done well, it, it's waffle, um, mm. there's a lot of... There's a lot talking, you need to size things down. There should be no homework. Uh, you can't expect children to do homework after such an exhausting day in front of the screen. And you need to get them away from the screen as well. So we did you know, mindfulness. We, we actually curated them moving around uh, their, their homes uh, away from the screen for certain periods. Conrad, we I had... just, sorry to interrupt you there. I just also want to ask too, I guess, you know, this just kind of disruption has been inevitable. So over the last couple of years, no doubt it's had an impact on our uh, students' learning. What can you do to make up for that now? Or is there no fixing that? Is there a way you know, forward that we need to be thinking of? Yeah, well, I mean, we've, we've lost a lot of learning and uh, experts are suggesting that this will have ramifications in time um, on, um, you know, all the way through to the economy. Uh, you can't really make up for, for lost learning in one sense. What you can do, I think, is recalibrate and um, be as mindful and as sensitive about the way that you're teaching uh, when students are back. The truth of the matter is, Students spend, if they, if they go through the whole arc of schooling, about 15,000 uh, hours of their lives in a classroom. And if you lose any of that time, you're not really going to make it up. Mm. But, you know, the, the thing is, it's about quality, it's not about quantity. I think that's the big takeaway. The other thing that we are still dealing with here is students wearing masks in the classroom. We know in New York today they're uh, removing that for students over five. What impact, if any, have masks had on students' learning? Well, you, 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 when you're wearing a mask and you can't see someone's face, you're taking away a fundamental part of their um, expression. You, it's difficult to read expressions um, when you can't see the mouth. And so it, it, it's muted uh, one of the most important lifelines in learning, which is the emotional contact that there is uh, between everybody involved in a, in a learning ecosystem. And so that, that, that's, a, that's a tough thing. We have to compensate for that. We have to compensate for the trauma of, of COVID and how difficult it is being removed from a social setting by putting much more of an emphasis on um, mindfulness, checking in with students. You know, what I was saying earlier was that you always start an online lesson by making sure all the cameras are on and everybody's there and everybody can see everybody else. And just little celebrations of us being together. Wearing a mask is taking away a part of your, um, you know, your, your 
expressive humanity. Um, so it's a tough thing to actually have to live through, especially growing up that way. So what is your advice to parents and to schools here in New Zealand where we're still in a situation where there are masks in classrooms, where their learning is being disrupted? What can they do right now to try and uh, make the most of the education that they are getting? Well, I think instructors and parents need to go easy on students uh, to be kind, to, 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 to be understanding. And if we can, if you've got the flexibility in your school system to modify the curriculum and modify assessments, then you need to do that. Don't expect students to be on the exact same factory line model that we've designed in schools since the 19th century with something like COVID going on. So you've got to dial back a little bit. And parents, you know what parents need to do is just understand how important it is to spend time together um, mindfully as a family. It's as simple as that. As I said, COVID in a funny way, it's reminding of us of what is essential in teaching and learning. It's, it's emotions, it's being able to really synthesize the, the, the deep and important points uh, in, in your educational pathway. Uh, it's about quality, not quantity. Because you have to deal less time with reduced um, sort of connectivity, and uh, by that I mean human interaction. Mm. Uh, and that means being creative, mean, being mindful, being innovative. And, and remembering the most important thing is it's student wellness and psychological safety first, and then getting across, um, you know, the synthesis of what it is that you're trying to learn and reducing and modifying so that that can happen. Absolutely. Um, Education expert joining us live this morning from the International School of Geneva, Conrad Hughes. Conrad, thanks for joining us.